Okay, uh, this is going to be a very brief tutorial video uh, to make up for the missed lecture on um, how to calculate minor losses in pipes. So um, our objectives here will be to do the following. First, be able to explain the origin and cause of uh, what we call minor losses. Second, calculate the head loss associated with common pipe components. And then third, combine minor and major head losses and the energy equation applied to a section of pipe with fittings. So we've seen, right, we introduced the idea of head loss um, through the context of the energy equation uh, when not, or when, when reformed into what we called the head equation. We said that the total head loss, which we denote as H sub L here, right, is composed of two parts, the major and the minor head loss. Now, uh, in class, we talked about how the major head loss right, is composed of the frictional losses in straight lengths of pipe. And we calculate this using the Moody diagram, right, which gives us a friction factor, F, which we then turn into the head loss major through what we call the Darcy-Weibach equation. equation. Right, and that's uh, and 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 so this head loss major uh, for turbulent flows is where we use the Moody diagram, and for laminar flows, we can actually calculate it directly, um, or we can use the line that is also written on uh, the Moody diagram for uh, for laminar flow. The minor head losses, which we'll be focusing on today, uh, are those caused by transitions, fitting valves or other flow disruptions, right? Things that cause energy to be lost as the flow moves through them. And so for a, a, a piping system like the one shown here, we're going to have to calculate both the major and the minor head losses in multiple sections of the pipe. So we would find major head losses, right? in all of these straight sections of pipe circled in green, and we would have to calculate minor head losses for all of the components circled in red. And then we would say that the total head loss is the sum of the head major head losses plus the sum of the minor head losses of each of the components in the system which we can then insert into our head equation or energy equation in order to find pump sizes, pressure drops, etc. So minor losses come from uh, whenever a flow has to go through what we call a tortuous path or whenever flow separation is introduced. So things like valves shown here, right? As the flow moves through this valve, we can see that that valve structure requires the flow to uh, contort and, and, and move through this very lossy uh, and turbulent path. And because of this turbulence, it introduces a lot of excess shear stresses and Reynolds stresses that then deduct from the total energy of the flow, which is represented through, as usual, head loss. In other situations, such as corners, flow is physically unable to turn a perfectly sharp corner. What you end up doing is getting this region of recirculation and that excess kinetic energy in the corner recirculation zone is eventually dissipated through heat, therefore leading to further head loss. Same idea with expansions and contractions. Depending on the design of the entrance of, a, of an expansion or a contraction, you'll end up with regions of flow separation again that once again dissipate energy creating head losses. So the way that this is calculated is through these K sub L terms, right? 
And these, uh, these, these case of L terms are then turned into minor head losses by multiplying them by velocity squared over two times gravity. Now we'll talk about this more in a second, but um, you just need to be cognizant of which velocity you're using, okay? So for example, in a corner, you would use the, uh, the velocity either before or after the corner, or the mean velocity before or after the corner. Same idea with a valve, but with an expansion or a contraction, Right? The idea is you're going to have one velocity coming in and another velocity going out. And so the, uh, the tables or figures that we use to look up these k sub l values, okay, these head loss coefficients, are typically going to be, uh, they'll, get, they'll specify whether you use v1 or v2 in the calculation. So to uh, back that up, here's a typical table that would be taken from the book, right, which shows common different types of pipe components. Okay, here on the left, and the associated head loss coefficients or case of bell values in the right column. So depending on whether you're using flanged versus threaded elbows, what are known as long radius elbows or regular 45 degree um, elbows, you have different values of case of L for each of those. Same for T's, unions, and valves. Now notice here that valves um, there's a lot of variability for the same type of valve depending on the position of the valve. And what I mean by that is, consider a gate valve. Okay, this is a, 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 a type of valve that works um, by raising and lowering uh, what appears to be a physical circular gate um, through some threads and a, uh, and a handle on the valve stem. So this, va this gate is raised and lowered in and out of the passage of the flow. So when the gate is fully open, you have a very small head loss coefficient. In fact, it's, uh, it's only about double what a straight union is, where something used to stick two pipes together. Now, as you begin to close the flow, or close the valve, you see that the head loss coefficient starts to increase sharply. 0 0.26 for a quarter closed, 2.1 for half closed, 17 for three quarters closed, right? And then if it were closed completely, you would have a value like this, infinity, right? Because it stops the flow entirely. And so uh, there is a thought experiment here. Think of uh, if you were to attach a garden hose to a normal wall spigot and shoot that garden hose up in the air and note how high the jet rises, right? That's a good indication of the, uh, of the energy head at the exit of the garden hose. And now if you close that, garden, or that, that wall spigot halfway, what happens to the jet? it ceases to rise as high, right? Your jet of water is going to decrease in height, and that change in the decrease in height is a good visible indicator of what the increase in the head loss is in that wall spigot. Now, to come back to what I said about which velocities to use to uh, redimensionalize your, um, your head loss coefficients, let's take a look at these figures on the left here, which show, respectively, head loss for a contraction and an expansion. Now notice here, you'll have two areas, right? The, uh, the larger area and the smaller area, or smaller area and larger area, respectively. Uh, and the x-axis here is the ratio of those two areas. So the amount of contraction or expansion represented by A1 over A2 or A2 over A1. So based on the ratio of those two areas, you can then look up a value for k sub L, right? So if we, uh, if we have an a, uh, expansion where it goes from pipe... Uh, has half a small pipe with half the area of the larger pipe. Okay, our area ratio will be 0 0.5. We'd come over here. We'd look up a k sub l value of about 0 0.25. Now, to turn that into a minor head loss that we can then stick into our energy equation, we have to note here that we're given h sub l is equal to the k sub l of 0 0.25 we just looked up times v1 squared over 2g. So the velocity we use is that in the smaller pipe, labeled a1. If we move up to the contraction case, if we wanted to say, all right, let's look at a, a 2 to 1 contraction, right, where a pipe goes into one that's got half of its area, okay, our case of L is again going to be at about 0 0.25. Coincidentally. Uh, but now, we're going to use v2, that is the area in the, or the velocity in the smaller pipe labeled as pipe number two. 
So that there is about uh, 99% of everything you need to know about calculating minor head losses. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put this into practice through one example. Okay. And uh, so shown here is a, uh, a section of pipe that is composed of two different diameters, okay, a 10 meter long 12 centimeter diameter pipe, which is then connected via a contraction to an 8 meter long pipe that's a 6 centimeter diameter, and stuck in the middle of that smaller pipe is a half open gate valve. All right, so we're specifying now that we've got a fluid, uh, in, namely ethanol, flowing through the pipe, and we're being asked to find the pressure drop between the inlet and the outlet. So we've got the fluid properties of ethanol here. We're being told that the flow rate is about a tenth of a cubic meter per second, and all the relevant dimensions are written on uh, the figure. So the steps we'd need to do, or to, to carry out, uh, in order to find this pressure drop we're asked to find would be as follows. First, we're going to set up the version of the energy equation. Okay, This is a familiar step. Second, determine the major components of head loss. Then, determine the minor head loss components. We're going to sum to find the total head loss. Okay. And then plug that back into our energy equation from step one to find the pressure drop between the entrance and the exit of the piping system. Okay, so first step here, setting up the energy equation. We're gonna go ahead and label the entrance here and the exit is our two, well, we'll label several points here. Okay, we'll label the entrance, point one. Okay, the entrance to this transition, point two, on the other side of that transition, point three. The entrance to the gate valve, four. Exit to the gate valve, five. And the exit from the pipe, six. So what we're really interested in finding, right, our delta P is going to be P1 minus P6. So if we go ahead and use our head equation, P1 over gamma, plus V1 squared over 2G plus Z1 is equal to P6 over gamma plus V6 squared over 2G plus Z2 plus the head loss between points 1 and 6. We're omitting any shaft head here because there's no pump and no turbine included in the system, so h sub s is going to identically be zero. So a few things we can cancel out right off the bat. For example, there's no change in elevation, so all our z terms go away. And then we can solve for p1 minus p6 okay, over gamma is going to be equal to v6 squared minus v1 squared over 2g plus, and now we're going to break out those uh, all the different components that make up this head loss between 1 and 6 into head loss 1 to 2 plus head loss 2 to 3 plus the head loss from 3 to 4 plus the head loss from four, oops, from four to five, plus the head loss from five to six. So by looking at where each of these head losses are occurring, we can see one to two, three to four, and five to six are our major head loss components. And two to three and four to five are the minor head loss components because they occur across fittings, transitions, etc. So we're going to move on to now finding 
the uh, the major head losses that we uh, occur in the two straight lengths of pipe. So um, we were told, if I scroll back here, um, that this pipe is commercial steel pipe, right? So if we look over here, this table, which can be found uh, in in your books in chapter eight. Uh, for a commercial steel or wrought iron pipe, we've got an equivalent roughness. Remember, this is the, uh, the inner pipe roughness that we need to apply the Moody diagram of 0 0.045 millimeters. Now, because both sections of pipe are made of the same material, they are both going to have this epsilon equal to 0 0.045 millimeters, which is 4.5 times 10 to the negative fifth meters. So now let's take this and apply it to pipe number one between points one and two. So we've got that the diameter of the pipe, right, D1 here is 0 0.2, oops, 0 0.12 meters. That means, got the typo over here, So that means that it's got a cross-sectional area of 0 0.011 meters squared. We can find the velocity through the pipe then. This is V1 equal to Q over A1, which is 0 0.1 cubic meters per second, over that 0 0.011 meters squared, which is going to lead to a velocity of 8.84 meters per second. Now with the Reynolds number, right, which we need to determine the flow regime and apply uh, the uh, and use the Moody diagram, we have that says rho or sorry V1 times D1 over the viscosity. Okay now using the uh, the density and the viscosity of ethanol which were given um, earlier uh, on an earlier slide as being equal to rho 789 kilograms per cubic meter and the dynamic viscosity being 0.00119 newton second per meter squared. This will give us a Reynolds number of approximately 2 times 10 to the fifth, okay, 200,000. So if we recall the, uh, the the Moody diagram, right, I'm going to fast forward one slide here. If we have the Moody diagram, this gives us the value um, on the x-axis. Now, to figure out which of these curves we're following, we also need to know the relative roughness. That is that epsilon of 0.045 millimeters divided by the diameter of the pipe. So we can calculate that very easily. Epsilon over D right, is 4.5 times 10 to the negative fifth meters divided by 0 0.12 meters. And that'll work out to be 0 0.000375. So if we come on over to our Moody diagram now, we've got uh, for the Reynolds number, two times ten to the fifth. Okay, two times ten to the fifth, and for our uh, value of epsilon, we've got or epsilon over d. We've got our point oh 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 three seven five 
which will land us. We've got 0 0.002 and 0 0.004, so that'll land us just below this curve, which should give us then friction factor oops, F of about 0 0.0168. Now it's a very precise uh, number to read off a graph. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you now that I uh, also applied the Howland equation to this one to calculate it, but um, that uh, ends up being very close to um, 0.017. Is that correct? Okay. So coming on back to the major head loss calculation here. We have F being equal to 0 0.0168, which means that the head loss, right, the major head loss oops, between points 1 and 2 is going to be F1 times L1 over D1 times V1 squared over 2G, which will give us 5.58 meters. So we're going to hold on to that value and now execute the same procedure on pipe 2. I'm going to uh, abbreviate this one a little bit um, because we just went through the entire process on pipe 1. But now we've got, right, points one, two, three, four, five, six. So the way we approach pipes like this, right, where it's got a, uh, it's got some sort of obstruction in the middle, in this case our, our half open gate valve, is that we calculate the total head loss or the major head loss between points three and six as if it were a continuous pipe. That is, we can um, uh, we could simply do three and four to, as as a single pipe, and five and six as a pipe, and sum those uh, head losses. But the idea is we're going to get the same value of F for each one, and so the head loss then for each one is going to end up being right the sum of our different F values for the two sections of pipe times Li over Di times V I squared over 2G. Well, because these values, these values, this value all stay the same, then it's the equivalent of just solving it as if it were a single uninterrupted pipe because we're adding all the lengths together. So that is to say We're going to be calculating h sub l from three, oops, the major component of h sub l from three to six. So same procedure, we need the uh, diameter, which is six centimeters, which leads to a cross-sectional area of 0 0.003 square meters, right? The velocity, which is Q over A2, now will end up being 35.37 meters per second. Our Reynolds number, okay, is now going to be 1.41 times 10 to the sixth, which is way into the turbulent range. And epsilon over d we have to recalculate because we've got a new diameter. So this is going to be our 4.5 times 10 to the negative fifth meters, 
over our six centimeter pipe diameter, which will end up being 0 0.00075. So now, going back to our Moody diagram, we've got another point to look up now. So our relative uh, roughness here is going to be right here, or cheated a little bit towards the point 0008. And our um, Reynolds number is going to be located right about here, just to the left of this 1.5 million. So our Our head loss for pipe number two, or our friction factor for pipe number two, is going to come out to about 0 Right, and then it's uh, at this point it's uh, very easy to then redimensionalize that and turn it into the major head loss. Head loss from three to six is F times L two over D two times V two squared over two G, which is going to end up being one hundred and fifty seven meters, much, much larger than the head loss in that large diameter pipe, despite the fact that it's a shorter section of pipe. Okay, we're going to hold on to this for our final reckoning of all head losses um, in the last step. Next, we're going to go on to the first of our minor head losses, which occurs in this contraction here between points two and three. All right. So we've got our, uh, our, our 12 centimeter to six centimeter uh, contraction. Now we know that uh, we're interested here in the contraction ratio. That's the small area over the larger area. Okay, and we know that A2 over A1 is going to be D2 over D1 squared. And because D2 to D1 is a 0 0.5, this will then be 0 0.25. So this value we can simply get from the, uh, uh, the x-axis intersecting with that curve, and we'll get a value of k sub l, a head loss coefficient, equal to 0 0.4. Okay, now in order to turn that into a minor head loss, we take that k sub l, and we multiply it by the smaller uh, velocity, k v2 squared over 2g. Now we have from the previous step that V2 right, is equal to, um, let me grab it here, is equal to 35.37 meters per second. And so this calculation then is going to give us 25.51 meters. Okay, hold on to that value. We've got one more minor head loss to contend with, and that's that that occurs in the half open gate valve here in the middle of pipe number two. Uh, so no graphs to look up here. Simply we've got this table of common components, as I showed you before. Uh, if we look down at valves and we find a gate valve that is half closed, we get a head loss coefficient of 2.1. So case of L is equal to 2.1. Okay, the minor head loss that occurs across these points, which are 4 to 5, minor 4 to 5, going to be that k sub l times v 
right? In this case, v2 squared over 2g. The reason I've included that 2 is because it's in the middle of pipe section 2, right? The only velocity here that we're concerned with is going to be the average velocity through the pipe on either side of that gate valve. And v2, right, again is at 35.37 meters per second. So the minor head loss here is going to be 133.9 meters. Okay, so um, now at this point we need to sum all of those different head losses up. Oops. So we had from the energy equation that P1 minus P6 over gamma was V6 squared minus V1 squared over 2G plus, right, the sum of all of our individual head losses. Um, so now solving for that P1 minus P6, in other words, multiplying both sides by gamma, that's going to give us our delta P that we're interested in. It's going to be equal to right, oh, there we go, rho over 2, right, V6 squared minus V1 squared plus gamma times, All right, we've got our head loss from 1 to 2, let's say major 1 to 2, plus the head loss minor from 2 to 3, plus the head loss major from 3 to 4, plus 5 to 6. Remember our points are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this one here represents the major head loss in that entire straight section of pipe plus the minor head loss from 4 to 5. And we've got the values for each of these. right? For our, uh, our first major head loss we had this was 5.6 meters, and the second major head loss, we had 157.3 meters. And our minor head losses in the first section of pipe, or the, sorry, that transition, we had 25.5 meters. And then the minor head loss um, in the uh, half-closed gate valve was 133 point, is that point 0.9? Let me get point 0.9 meters. So plug in and chug in all those uh, <clears throat> numerical values, we're going to get a pressure drop of 2.03 oh, times 10 to the sixth pascals. And so that is how you implement major and minor head losses at the same time. As a quick visual aid to understand what's going on here, if you recall uh, this discussion of what we call the energy line versus the hydraulic grade line, okay, um, the, uh, the, the energy line represents the sum of P over gamma plus V squared over 2G plus Z, okay? plotted uh, along the direction of flow through, for example, a piping system. So note that these three quantities together okay, are essentially what goes on each side of the head equation, but don't, doesn't include the head loss. So what this means is, if we have point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, we start out with some amount of energy head at point one. Okay. That's the energy where it 
enters the pipe, or the energy head, and then from one to two, you're gonna have this linear drop. Okay. And by the time you get to point two, right, you have head loss from one to two represented as the difference between this initial energy line and your new point on the energy line. Then from points two to three, you have this precipitous drop that occurs across that contraction. Then you have another linear drop from uh, four to five, followed by that very large drop. This is not really drawn to scale. And then continuing that linear uh, trend. And so you've got here head loss from two to three, right, which is our minor loss. Here we've got the head loss from four to five, which is a minor loss. And then we've got our other major losses in pipe section two, represented by these, uh, these uh, downward gradients. And so for the example we just did, the idea is that by the time you get to the end of this energy line, the energy line should have fallen a total of 322 meters. So with that quick example, I hope that uh, you're all comfortable at this point uh, looking up minor head loss coefficients, um, whether they come in the form of tables like this or plots like this, and then turning those into head losses and plugging them into the energy equation to do useful things with them.